It is time to take a look at the latest news from a company that aim to protect patients from deadly fungal diseases. So welcome, Tine Kold Olesen. You are the CEO of Biosurgeon. Thank you very much. Okay, how big of a problem is it with deadly fungal diseases? Yeah, so the estimation is that approximately um, 6.8 million people are infected by a life-threatening severe fungal disease every year. We also call them invasive fungal diseases. Um, 2.5 will die of a life-threatening uh, fungal disease, which is approximately, approximately 40%. It's a huge number. It's a really huge number. So it's telling that there's an unmet medical need mm. indeed. How do you meet this need then? Of course, if it's a huge, then I guess everyone wants to, to treat it. But what can you do that is not already done right now? So what we're doing, um, or I think you have to take a step back and you have a look at what is currently on the market. What kind of treatments are there? And those kind of treatments you can actually divide in two categories. Uh, one is uh, a category that is super effective, where you're killing the fungus, it's broad spectred, it forms no resistance, but there's a lot of toxicity in that compound, using that compound. So it's, uh, you make um, irreversible damage on the kidney or the liver, sometimes there's something with the heart. So every physician is kind of limiting the use of that compound. And um, so uh, limiting means they go on a low dose for a short period of time. The other category of antifungals, as they're called, is uh, compounds that inhibits growth. It doesn't kill and it's not broad spectrum because that when you inhibit growth, then there's also a risk that the fungal will form resistance. And when you form resistance, the treatments stop being effective. So you are actually in a dilemma if you should treat with something that is very toxic or something where you, you have a risk, high risk of resistance formation. What our compound is doing, PSG005, uh, and we have shown that in uh, healthy volunteers and in animal studies, and now we are testing in patients. What it shows is that, or it was designed to kill the fungus. It will not form resistance because it's killing. And it's broad spectrum. It covers approximately 90% of fungal strains. Um, and then on top of that, uh, it doesn't have the severe side effects. It was designed to be more specific to the fungus than uh, to anything else. I understand. And speaking of trying it in patients, in, in humans, uh, the big news is that you have now enrolled the first patient group in a proof of concept clinical trial, which means uh, that everyone is now receiving treatment or, or have already finished it. Um, Describe to me why is this such an important thing for you? Uh, it's always important for a company to go into real patients. The other part of this uh, trial, why it's so interesting, is actually because we treat the patients that have shown they are resistant to other therapies. We also treat those who have had severe uh, side effects of the very effective drug, but they can't tolerate it, so they have to stop treatment. So we are actually raising the bar and saying, if we can manage to treat patients that have shown resistance, or if we can manage to treat patients that are intolerant to the most effective drug, then we are in a super good position to move forward in our development mm -hmm. program. Then, of course, we want to know what will you evaluate? Is it if it works, if it's, if it's safe? What else? Yeah, so uh, any trial, uh, when you're starting patients, it's always safety first. So safety and tolerability, and then uh, on top of that, uh, we're going to look at efficacy. Hmm. Let's talk about one of the patients who actually recovered fully already, and ha he is now in a follow-up uh, period. Can you tell me a little bit about him? 
Yeah, so the patient um, comes in and he has moderate ren renal impairment and uncontrolled diabetes. That means he cannot be treated uh, with a very effective drug because he has this precondition. Uh, at the same time, he has a fungal infection called mucormycosis. Mucormycosis is also called black fungus and it basically eats you up from inside. So it eats the bones, the soft tissue anything. Um, there's really no super good effective treatment uh, for this particular fungus. So what happened is um, our patient starts and uh, he, he's treated for 28 days, he's dose escalating and when he uh, reached day 28 he is recovered and he, happened, he did not have any severe side effects. Standard of care in these type of patients, because the fungus is so aggressive, is that you take the most effective compound and then you treat for two weeks. Then uh, you are in for surgery after that and you try to remove dead and infected tissue and then uh, you just have to wait and see. In this case, the uh, mucormycosis was sitting in the lung and he had to, in principle, you had to remove uh, one of his lungs. The thing is, because he, over the course of 28 days recovered, he didn't have to, had to go through surgery and had, have his lung removed, which is an amazing uh, story. Basically what you say is you saved his lung in yeah. 28 days. Yeah. Within uh, in the 28 story. days of treatment, yes. Yeah. Um, so then, of course, you want to know, uh, do you already know when we can expect results from the trial? Yeah, so we, uh, in total, we're including 15 patients. We have the first group uh, is in and being treated, and we have uh, 10 more to go. And we expect to have results of those by end uh, January 2025. Mm. Will this uh, trial affect your budget at all? So uh, the financing we have today is covering uh, the full trial. Uh, we have a one exercise coming up in November, uh, which will be allocated to other activities, and that will take us into 2026. Mm. Let's say that the results are positive, like you hope and believe. What is the next step for you? So uh, the... Uh, the biggest activity we have is um, we will have to find, or we should find, uh, an, an additional partner. We have one partner, uh, one partner is Alchem Laboratories in uh, India, and they're helping us with this trial, uh, and at the same time they have committed to doing phase two and three trials in India, paying for the patients in India. And that's a huge uh, help for us. Um, and when they have executed uh, this phase two and three, then uh, their uh, financing will have to be converted into shares in biosurgeon. And that's at a very uh, favorable conversion for biosurgeon. At the same time, they will also get the rights to uh, the Indian market, and then we will have a royalty. So we're looking for additional partners. That's one activity. The other major activity is actually um, to get regulatory advice. How do we continue uh, our journey with the development of BSD? And that means we will uh, try to go to FDA and we will also try to go to EMA and show them the data uh, and try to discuss with them what is the best way forward. That's the other major milestone. And then, of course, planning the next clinical trials. Mm. That's very interesting to hear. Thank you so much for joining us here, Tine Kold Olesen from Biosurgeon. Thank you.